Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sau and welcome to Bed Surgery at Ease. So finally, we are meeting after a long long time. I was really busy. So today we will be discussing a case report on ocular dermoid, the surgical management of ocular dermoid in cattle. Um, disclaimer, this surgery is, has not been performed by me. This has been done one, by one of my colleague, friend. He or she did not want to take his or her name, but it is not done by me. Before going to the case report, some formalities you know. This is my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter handle. You can follow it there. Before that, please do subscribe to this channel. Next, coming to the case report. Day minus one, day zero is the day of surgery. If you are following my all my case reports, I take day zero as the day of surgery, and before that minus, after that plus. So one day before surgery, the case came to the veterinary dispensary with the complaint of lacrimation, and there is a growth. You can see this growth. Okay, this growth actually included the third eyelid and the palpebral conjunctiva. Okay, there is two conjunctiva. Conjunctiva has bulbar and the palpebral. Bulbar, bulbar remains on the eyeball. Palpebral is self-explanatory. Okay, you see this mass, and this mass was ulcerated. You can see the ulceration here. This is ulcerated. Also, it was maggot infested, and you can see the clear cut lacrimation. Okay, this is lacrimation. These are signs and symptoms. Based on these signs and symptoms, earlier it was treated by some other. Uh, parabets, uh, but you see this needs surgery. This is a case of ocular dermoid. So this needs surgery. Radical surgery is the only option. So he or she went for the surgery. Now comes the day zero. That is the day of surgery. Uh, it was sedated with gelatin. You see, if you are giving gelatin or any sedative, then you need 12 to 24 hour fasting. 12 to 24 hours. Fasting. Usually in field condition you will find 12 hour fasting. It is very convenient to fast the animal overnight then you can perform the surgery on the morning. If you are fasting for 24 hours which is a better option than the 12 hours you need to give fluid therapy. The maintenance fluid therapy should be given if you are fasting the animal for 24 hours. So usually the practice is 12 hour fasting. So the overnight the animal was fasted and the surgery was performed in the morning. Along with the xylazin that is sedative which was given at the dose rate of 0.05 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly and there was addition of some top up also. You see these two nerve blocks, can you identify these two nerve blocks? I have already uh, told you or there is a lecture regarding the nerve blocks of head. You see this one is Peterson, this one is Peterson nerve block. Okay. You see, this is zygomatic arch, this is supraorbital process. The joining, the uh, depression near this joining point where you have to place the needle, that is the Peterson nerve block. You will deposit the local anesthetic near the foramen orbito rotundum. Okay, so this is Peterson nerve block, and can you tell this nerve block? This is a very easy one. Okay, you see, this is palpebra, this is ear or auricular. In between these two, that is auricular palpebral nerve block. This is given just above the zygomatic arch where the nerve is superficial. This is auricular or you can say AP, auricular palpebral nerve block. This one is Peterson, this is auricular palpebral nerve block. For any surgery of eye, you need these two nerve blocks. Okay. And these are nerve blocks and this is the surgery photographs. You see this mass, you can see this mass, it involves both the palpebral conjunctiva and here there will be third eyelid okay it is membrana nictitans or third eyelid whatever you may call it a row of horizontal mattress sutures were put just below the attachment and it will then excised out this is the excised mass you can see here there is uh, you see when it is ulcerated and maggoted it is very difficult to remove all the tissues okay so you can remove maximum tissue whatever they is there you try to remove them or try to excise them whatever is left they will heal you will see how the case progresses and then the temporary tetrasoraphy was performed you see providing a temporary tetrasoraphy 
is very very essential when you are doing the ocular dermoid many times they are not essential also if it is a very small one but if it is a very large one there is you may find this torsography very very useful it prevents any um, external dirt or external materials going into the eye causing any problems or also it uh, prevents further damage by the animal okay temporary torsography is a very good practice when you are doing the ocular dermoid cases okay whether it is palpebral conjunctival or you can say corneal also you will find this temporary torsography very very useful you see the torsography is kept for 3 to 4 days but you can keep for 7 days i have done two there is a video also if you want to see the procedure how the horizontal matter sutures are put then it is excised out you can see a video i will give the link in the description also or, or you can go to the playlist surgery cattle and buffalo there you will find different surgery videos i think the last one will be the dermoid surgery okay i uh, for two to three cases i have kept for seven days but usually it is convenient that you keep the temporary torsory for 3 to 4 days which is very very good for large animals you see in small animals like dog and cat you may need very very utmost care but in large animals they don't need so much of care if you are giving something they will heal by himself or herself the animal so this is a temporary torsory it was simple continuous pattern okay i have al also discuss regarding the suture patterns okay you can check that video also this was simple continuous now on day 4 we took the surgeon took feedback from the owner regarding the progress of case which is very good nature of a surgeon he or she should take follow up wherever possible you can see this corneal opacity can you identify this corn let me enlarge this for you can you see this corneal opacity you see here can you see this can you tell why this corneal opacity was there in during the time of surgery it was not there okay but why this corneal opacity let me tell you here the suture pattern which are used was simple continuous you see mistakes are there there will be mistakes if you are a surgeon and you are a field vet because this large animal surgery nowadays there is many, there are many colleges which prefer small animal surgery large animal cases are not that much presented to the uh, usually the colleges are placed in cities so you may not find the large animal cases so when you will be doing the large animal cases you may commit some mistakes these are minor mistakes the mistakes which are not life threatening that's all right okay but thing is the intention behind the mistake matters if your intention is to heal the animal it's all right but if your intention is to extract the money from the farmer then it is not good so see here what happened when you give simple continuous suture you will take bite from the skin then will exit through the palpebral conjunctiva then here from palpebral conjunctiva then it will be out through the skin you see here the suture it will come in contact with this cornea or you can say the bulbar conjunctiva when it will come in contact with this cornea it will cause some irritation or inflammation that is why you find this corneal opacity what is the better option which i usually prefer you take you see you can go for far near near far you see this is a suture technique for tendon i have already mentioned in the suture pattern class that this is a suture pattern for the tendonography or tendon suturing but here this is different what to do you take a bite from the far end if you will consider this as incision end then take a bite from far end do not puncture this palpebral conjunctiva simply take out from the near end of the skin then you go here then near end then far end simply here you can put two to three interrupted sutures rather than the uh, simple continuous type okay 2 to 3 is fine or if you are very larger like this you may need 4 to 5 interrupted suture you can say you can also say this is interrupted lombot lombot suture you know if you do not know suture patterns go to the suture pattern class or i will give the link in the description you can say this one as the interrupted lombot pattern type okay so here 
the eyelid will be closed it should not be too tight otherwise there will be inversion it should be just tight so that the eyelid will come close to each other when the eyelid will come close to each other this cornea will never be in contact with this suture and there will not be any irritation and you may not find this corneal opacity okay another thing you notice here you see this necrotic tissue here can you see this necrotic tissue see here this necrotic why this necrotic tissue see when the dermates are very very large big dermate and they are already ulcerated see what happens suppose this is a dermate mass the usual practice is to give interrupted pattern sutures or you can say through and through horizontal matrix sutures placed close to each other okay sometimes if it is very big then two row of horizontal uh, matrix are given in contrast to each other and when you will excise try to excise as near to as there the suture line sometimes it may not be possible because they are in deep seated position so you have to excise the tumor or uh, sorry excise the dermoid from keeping some space here so you see you have placed horizontal matrix here here so what will happen this tissue will not get any blood supply so they will get necrotic or they will die out and they will come out okay so here you can see this necrotic tissue it will come out eventually so with time they will come out and it will heal up you will see the heal up pictures also see this is day 4 you will find the corneal opacity i explained why there was corneal opacity and there was lacrimation you can see the lacrimation okay next on the day 7 day 7 you see here the lacrimation has been decreased and there is very less necrotic tissues here see there are some necrotic tissue will come out with time it will come out okay when there will be healing it will come out you see the corneal opacity is now gone the corneal opacity is now gone you see there isn't any corneal opacity let me enlarge this one for you you see there isn't any corneal opacity see okay there isn't any corneal opacity only there is some necrotic ma uh, necrotic tissues which are coming out and it will come out with time and it will it is the sign of healing you can say it is sign of healing there is a lacrimation you see the lacrimation here and there you see there the volume of lacrimation there is too much of lacrimation but here on the day 7 the lacrimation has been reduced drastically that means the animal is healing okay now the sweet moment the day 15 see the healed of please the healed of wound see there is no lacrimation or no corneal opacity no dead tissues nothing the animal is now completely all right completely fine this is the best happy moment for a field surgeon i hope he or she was very very happy during this moment okay so from this uh, lecture you understood two things first one the suturing of the uh, the temporary torsorapy the suturing of the the suturing of the skin only the skin part will only be sutured the bite will be taken from the skin part only you should not puncture the palpebral conjunctiva okay this technique i actually learned from my teacher because on the first time the first case which i dealt in field was ocular dermoid okay my first case report was also on ocular dermoid which i published in a journal so i learned this technique from my teacher and it is very very useful second thing you should know about some post operative cares which was given first one uh, he or she preferred i usually do not prefer the subconjunctival injections but it can be given he or she gave the gentamicin subconjunctival injection 2 ml in gel given uh, i should not discuss the dose rates of all these drugs because you know i am against the quackery you only know the which drugs are given then the antibiotics the penicillin and streptomycin which is usually supplied by the government meloxicam as anti inflammatory you see he or she after removing all the uh, dermal tissue was not sure that there might be some tissues which may be leaked 
uh, left you see the draw the uh, maggots which are present many a times maggots go deep okay they borrow deep so that is why a preventive single dose of ivermectin was given post operative apart from that chlorpheniramal malaria it is anti allergic the most important in ocular dermatitis cases is are topical solutions or topical eye drops he or she combined the genflux which is basically ofloxacin optihist it is a drug which is basically anti inflammatory anti pruritic in nature so he he or she combined these two uh, drugs the on uh, antibiotic and one anti inflammatory agent and the result was very very good okay see this is actually very very good <laughs> this surgery was really good and uh, i hope that he or she continues this journey further and do a does uh, very great surgeries in future so this is all about this case report we'll meet in next class maybe a case report or any theory class till then see you tata bye bye take care